It's what it is, so it's nice and quiet up there as well. Nobody goes there. So we are going to go through one of the Emperor's palaces. Then we're going to go to a great view over the Roman Forum. I'm going to tell you all about the Forum from the top. So if you want to walk through there afterwards, you'll know which bits to look at. Okay. This part of the tour usually takes about 45 minutes. My name's Kate. If you have any questions, shout them out. I will do my best. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, follow this other route. Go up the steps, take a ride, just follow the road until I tell you to stop. All right. Let's go. Keep it on. worse than it is and then everyone's pleasantly surprised. All right everybody, now then, um, I already mentioned that the Palatine is where Rome was founded. That means to explain the Palatine, we have to explain the entire history of Rome. Uh, Rome has nearly 3,000 years worth of history and we don't have that much time. So this is going to be the quick version, okay, kind of the abridged version of the history of Rome. So. They think the first settlers came to this area in about the 12th century BC. That was the time of the Trojan Wars with the Greeks. So, has anyone here seen that fantastic film Troy with Brad Pitt? Who really, really enjoyed that film? <laughs> Just me. Um, <laughs> I've watched it a lot for historical research, of course. Um, if you've seen the film or you know the legend, you know the Greeks went to Troy, they demolished the city, a lot of the Trojans fled and they ended up on the shores of Italy just down the Tiber River from where Rome is today. They set up the first city in this area which was a place called Alba Longa. Now a few generations later in the 8th century BC, there was a king of Alba Longa called Numitor. Nice king, everybody liked him. Numitor had an evil brother called Amulius. Amulius wanted to be king so he killed his brother, took over the throne, but he didn't want any sort of threat to his reign so he took his brother's daughter, his niece, whose name was Rhea Silvia, and he placed her into the cult of the Vestal Virgins so she couldn't have any children that would be the rightful heirs to the throne. However, uh, Rhea Silvia became pregnant by the god Mars. 
Romulus. As you do. And uh, gave birth to twins, Romulus and Remus. Now obviously the king hates these babies, they're going to grow up to be the kings. So he gives them to a servant, orders the servant to take them out and kill them. This always happens by the way. Uh, the servant had a heart, he didn't want to kill two innocent children, so instead he put them in a little basket and he just floated them off down the Tiber River. Now, on a fig tree which was overhanging the side of the hill. There the basket and the babies were found by a she-wolf who rescued the babies, nursed the babies and brought them back to her she-wolf cave which was on the side of the hill. There they were found by a shepherd named Faustulus. Faustulus rescued these children, brought them up to the little shepherd village that was at the top of the hill here and raised them on the Palatine. So Romulus and Remus grow up on the Palatine Hill. Now when they become young men they realise that they're sons of kings, they're meant to be kings but they're twins, they're rivals, they don't know which one the king is. They decide to set up a city each and wait for the gods to decide. So Romulus stays here on the Palatine, Remus goes to the Aventine Hill which is over in that direction. The gods send six eagles to Remus and twelve eagles to Romulus, therefore selecting Romulus as the king. Remus, enraged at this decision, came running through the valley, jumped over the wall of Romulus' city, and Romulus used this as an excuse to kill his brother. Now this happened on the 21st of April, 753 BC. Exactly. Um, somehow they've calculated that the 21st of April is the founding date of Rome. So still today, every year on that date, we always have parades, processions, fireworks, always celebrate the founding of the city. Romulus, of course, first king of Rome, goes on basically to rule Rome, gives his name to the city too. Now, before we move on, I'm going to tell you all the things they know to be true about this story. They know that Rome was founded about 753 BC. They found some shepherd huts up here on the hill. They date from about the 8th century BC, so people were definitely living here then. And they also know that the first king's name was Romulus. That's it. So everything else, the she-wolf, the babies, the god Mars, um, Romans love legends, they love myths. So over the years, this story has been repeated and repeated. It has become the true well, founding Rome story of Rome. Name, Sorry? Is that how Rome got its name? That's how Rome got its name. And that's why we're pleased that Remus didn't win, because otherwise it would be called Reem. Um, <laughs> all right. Now, um, uh, Romulus, of course, first king. So, uh, after Romulus, you have six kings. The seven kings of Rome. Seven is the magic number of Rome. So, seven kings, seven hills. Now, um, the, the last few of those kings were Etruscans. Etruscans basically took over the area, and the Etruscans were very mean and nasty to the Romans that lived here. So in 509 BC, there was a big battle called the Battle of Lake Regulus, where the Latins, the Romans, kicked out the Etruscans, and Rome became a republic at that point. Remained a republic right up until 27 BC, that's when Augustus Octavian became the first emperor. Now during that whole republican time, the Palatine Hill became the sort of desirable residence of Rome. This is where all the rich noble families lived because the air at the top of the hill is much cooler, much more breeze from the sea in the summer, it's a lot cleaner as well. But also you're right next to the Roman Forum, the city centre, so this is sort of the best place you can live. So Octavian was born up here, so when he became emperor, didn't see any reason to move, built quite a modest house, just lived here with his wife, but it set off this trend, the emperors after him wanted to live on the Palatine, they wanted to be thought of as the new family founders of Rome, so they come for historical reason to live on the Palatine Hill. Build their palaces on here, we get the word palace from the word Palatine. Now the main palace that you've got up here today, and the one that we're actually going to walk through, is the palace uh, of an emperor named Domitian. Domitian was emperor between 81 and 96 AD, he was actually one of the sons of Vespasian who built the Colosseum where he'd just been. So Domitian became emperor, decided that he wanted a really, really, really big house. So figured out the Palatine had three small peaks and had two of those peaks flattened so that he could build his palace over two thirds of the size of the top of the hill. Okay, Massive house. Now, unfortunately, Domitian was emperor for 15 years and he spent 14 years building his house. So, actually only got to live here for a year, but great news for the emperors after Domitian, they got to move into this spectacular palace. It was inhabited right up until the 5th century AD, the fall of Rome. Nowadays, you do have to use your imagination a little bit up here, as you can probably tell, but we are gonna go through the main sections of the house. I'll try and explain it to you, recreate it a bit. But all the while, we'll head over to the other side, we'll finish up talking about the forum, I'll tell you how that fits in as well. Okay, if you've got your breath back a little bit, we're gonna go right up to the top now, so.
All right, everyone, there's no more climbing. You're at the top now. It's all downhill from now on. Um, now then, uh, Domitian, he actually divided his palace into three separate sections. You have the Domus Augustana, that means the house of Augustus, that means the house of the emperor. All emperors were given the name Augustus, so it gets a bit confusing, but basically that means it was Domitian's private residence. It's where he lived with his family. Second part was the Domus Flavia. He was a member of the Flavian dynasty, that was the family name. The Domus Flavia was the official residence, so all the dining rooms, reception rooms, the throne room. Third section of the palace was the stadium, section down here. The stadium was the sort of mini version of the Circus Maximus. So after dinner, Domitian and his friends would sit on an emperor's box, which is just where that semicircle is on the left-hand side, and they would have one-horse chariot races around here, or they'd have little running races up and down. So any entertainment that the emperor wanted to see was put on in this little stadium. But the big difference between this and the Circus Maximus was that this was private. This was not open up to the rest of the people of Rome. It was for Domitian and the sort of select few that he decided to invite. Now, if you think of Roman entertainment as gladiator fighting, blood, guts, gore, coliseum stuff, that kind of thing. Please remember that the top Saturday night entertainment in this little stadium were 12 naked men pegging tents. Whoever built a tent the fastest won a prize. So actually that's what the emperor wanted to see and what I would want to see as well. Um, everyone keeps asking why they have to be naked. I don't know. Um, the thing is uh, that maybe it wasn't quite so about blood and guts as we thought. All right. Uh, now, as you look around the hill, the stadium, everything, it's all been made out of brick and concrete. And that's because the Romans invented concrete. Uh, and that was brilliant because they could build structures very quickly, very easily and very cheaply. But brick and concrete, it's not very pretty. So they just used to face it with marble tiles and stick marble on the outside. A lot easier than building things out of big blocks of marble, but you've got the same effect. You have different colours, different patterns. Nowadays, you can't see a lot of the marble up on the Palatine. There's a few scraps and you can sort of see it stuck on the edge of some of the columns down here in the stadium. Uh, if you'd like to see the rest of the marble from the Palatine though, you need to have a walk through some of Rome's 912 churches and you'll definitely see some of it because during the Renaissance they wanted to build churches in Rome, they needed marble. They could either go to the marble quarry, do all the work, hack it all out, or they could pop up to the Palatine which had been abandoned for about a thousand years, just a big mess, come up here, just root through, pick out all the materials that they needed. So of course they went for the easy option and they just recycled everything up here about 500 years ago. So as we go through the rest of the house, you have to imagine everything you're looking at was once covered with marble, fresco, mosaic, bronze, some kind of decoration. You would not have seen any brickwork originally. Okay. Bear that in mind, we're going to go through to the private residence now through that doorway. There was no roof over this, but there was over there. 